You're not 
separated no matter what There's never been a better time to get honest There's never been a better time to get clean So come as you are Run to the cross speaking no matter what they do we still love them we try to stir them in the right direction but uh, this song is called speak to the mountain and it says why should I worry when giants come calling my name and I don't care who you are and I don't care where you came from every person in this building has their own battles that they have to face amen can I get a witness in this house? Does everybody agree with me that we have our own battles that nobody else knows about but us and the Lord? Hallelujah. But we don't have to be shaken in mind because we know who our, who our Father is. Our Father is very close to us no matter where we're at, no matter where we've been. He is right there and He will not leave us. Amen. He is faithful. He is a faithful God and He loves you. Praise you, God. So why would I worry when giants come calling my name? Because my God is so much bigger than troubles I face. Oh, and why would I hunger for power, riches, or fame? Oh, cause my God is so much better than all of these things. Can you help me sing it this morning? So I won't be
worship you in this house. Oh, can we just begin to praise him in this house? Oh, there's some people here that's got some battles going on. There's some people here that's got storms going on in their life. Oh, but our God is faithful. Oh, our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Hallelujah. Our God is faithful. Can you look at your neighbor and say, our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. There's no mountain too high, no valley too low. There's no fear that I have. He doesn't already know. There's no problem too big. There's no weapon too strong. There is nothing for God that's impossible. There's no mountain too high, no valley too low. There's no fear that I have. He doesn't already too big. There's no weapon too strong. There is nothing for God that's impossible. So I won't be shaken and I won't be moved. Because my God is faithful. His promise is true. That's our Jesus this morning. Praise God. Amen. Thank God. I want to say a couple things, and then I'm going to read uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Chris made mention before he sung the last song that he sung about we all go through stuff, you know, and there's a favorite uh, verse in that uh, song to him and that God would save anybody. Well, one of my favorite verses in the Bible is found in Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. And it's talking about the very thing that we all go through stuff, I mean, just living life is, uh, we, we face stuff. But anyway, the, Paul, and there's a lot of reasons I like that. I think Paul had a, uh, I think we got some ancestry in Paul because he talked sort of like we did in Romans 8, 18. He said, for I reckon, I, I've said that a million, I reckon that's right. You know, that's just the way we talk here in Appalachia. But anyway, Romans 8, 18 says, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Amen. Thank God forever. So what, what I'm talking about, if you are, and Jessica mentioned it too, if there's somebody going through something, man, if you're going through something, uh, just know this, don't get hung up on what you're going through. If you're a child of God, just look beyond what you're going through to what you're going to. And I can guarantee you that what lies before us, amen, is a lot greater and better than what we're going through right now. But also, uh, in the Bible, in the old Bible especially, it talks about, and, and it came to pass, and it came to pass. And I get encouragement from that phrase because whatever is you're, you are going through will come to pass. It won't last. It will come to pass. And, and then uh, Jessica, in her song, was talking about how faithful that God is. In 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13, the Bible says, There is no temptation taken you, but such is common to man, but God is faithful to not suffer or allow you to be tempted above you're able to bear, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. How many believes in the faithfulness of God? God is faithful, amen. Now let me read these uh, verses. I'm going to start at verse 13, and uh, I'm going to read down through verse 18. And verse 18 is our text, and it's also another favorite verse of mine. I like the whole Bible, but, uh, you know, there's 150 Psalms, but there's no Psalm like Psalms 23. 
Six short verses that's so profound. Amen. Uh, Psalms 2710 is a great verse. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Psalms 127.1, except the Lord build the house, they that build it labor in vain. I mean, it's full of great psalms, but there's no psalm like Psalms 23. So let me read this and we'll pray and you can sit for a while. The Bible says in verse 13, we have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Paul said, I'm preaching and speaking because I believe what I'm saying. Now, listen, church, you, you may not like me very much. You might not even like the way I preach. But I'll tell you one thing. You ain't going to leave this church and not believe that I believe what I'm telling you. You might not believe what I'm saying. But I'm going to convince you that I believe it. And I do believe it. Listen, I believe the whole Bible. Even the parts that I don't understand, I still know they're right. You mean there's parts of the Bible you don't understand? Absolutely. Amen. Thank God. God. That's why Paul said, now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Amen. And the Bible says, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you for all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God for which cause we faint not we don't pass out we don't faint amen but the, uh, though our outward man perisheth amen that, that means <laughs> this old body's going to wear out church, uh, though the outward man perisheth, it says yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Amen. Hallelujah. Every day's a good day with God. Will you say amen? Amen. And then it says for our light affliction and even the great apostle Paul is going through something here and he calls it light stuff. Our light affliction, that means problems and difficulties. Amen. Our light affliction which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory and now is our text and one of my favorite all time verses in the Bible while we look not at the things which are seen you see, when we go to looking at what's going on in the world, we get discouraged. Uh, when we go to looking at what the news media is trying to tell us, uh, we may lose hope. But I'm glad to know that because of Jesus Christ, uh, we don't have to look at what we're looking at. Amen. While we look not at the things which are seen, uh, but at the things which are not seen. Now that's a paradox. Uh, amen. Don't look at what you can see, but look at what you can't see. Amen. I'm, I'm going to explain to that about that a little bit later. Ain't that amazing, uh, amen, that you can look at what you don't see, amen. And the Bible says, while we look not at the things which are seen, uh, but at the things which are not seen, for the things uh, which are seen, uh, 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 the afflictions that Paul was talking about, the problems that he was going through, well, amen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, uh, they are eternal. Would you pray with us. Father, as we humbly come into your presence now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray God that you would help us uh, to help this church. As we've come before you, God, with open hearts and open Bibles, uh, let us receive from the engrafted word of God that we may grow thereby. I pray God for every family that is represented here today. Bless them and us. Keep us free from harm and injury. I pray for that person, Lord, that's groping in the darkness of this world that you would have mercy and not sacrifice uh, and translate them from the power of darkness uh, into the kingdom of your dear son and we'll never fail to give you praises and honor and glory for it all in Jesus name and let the church of the living God shout amen. amen. While you're being seated, I want to tell you a story that I've shared with you many, many times uh, over the years. But the truth of the matter is there's verses in the Bible that has, all of them has great meaning to me. But some verses in the Bible has uh, uh, special meaning to me. And this is one of them, verse 18. And I'll be honest with you, the reason it has such a great meaning to me is uh, my heart was crushed uh, when my mother went to be with the Lord. I was 23 years old and uh, hadn't been a Christian all that long, didn't know a whole lot about the Bible, not saying I know a lot now, but I know more, thank God, now than I did then. 
And when mama, mama went to be with the Lord, uh, I, 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 I'll just tell you, I was clinging to everything. And uh, God uh, uh, gave me a song. I don't sing, but he, he revealed a song to me. I laid down in the living room and I took a little nap. And when I woke up, this song from what page 120 in the hymnal was on my heart and it was victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story about a king that came from glory. He sought me and he bought me and he redeemed me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I, know, ere I knew him and all my life is due him. And then it says there's victory in Jesus. And I didn't feel much like there was victory because uh, somebody that I loved dearly had went to be with the Lord. I wanted her to get better, but she didn't get better. Amen. But I can tell you what, she's doing all right now. And I believe that with all my heart. And then the story that I've told this church many times is uh, 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 she had three brothers, which was my three uncles, and she had three sons. And that was her pallbearers. That's... Uh, me and my two brothers carried the one that we loved and her brothers on the other side of us, someone that we held dearly to our heart. We walked up that old hillside to that lonesome cemetery. And I'm telling you, the Word of God, just like Gary taught in his message, uh, is powerful. And this Word that I'm getting ready to share with you in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 18, it rose right up in my heart. And it says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, all I could see was mud and spit and snow and raining, and uh, I could see my uncles and my brothers, and I could see what contained, uh, amen, the earth earthly house of my mother's tabernacle that she lived in. That's it. Amen. While we look not at things that are seen, but at things which are not seen. For things which are seen are temporal, but things which are not seen are eternal. And I'm telling you, church, uh, the Spirit of God spoke to my heart in a still, small voice, and he said, Gary, this ain't really real. And I thought, God, it's real to me. Amen. My heart's breaking. My heart's aching. Uh, I feel lost and I feel, I've, I, I, I've experienced a void in my heart. And then that same little voice that said this ain't really real. You know what he said? He said the real Margaret Bellamy went home to be with me two days ago and I want to tell you that is what's real. Heaven is more real than what we see down here. Heaven. Praise God. Give him praise and glory. Heaven is more real than whatever you're going through. Heaven is more real than whatever you're facing, amen. And that's what I want to talk about for the next few minutes. Uh, and you see the Bible from cover to cover has a lot of things uh, that probably to the natural mind is really out there, really out there. I mean, it's really out there for somebody to say, you know, don't look at what you see, but look at what you don't see. And my natural man was to say, my God, that's crazy. Amen, how can you look at what you don't see? see. Well, I'm going to tell you, church, uh, amen, um, when we look at, at life from a biblical perspective, uh, amen, the simple yet and yet profound statement becomes very clear because the Bible tells us, uh, amen, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, it says, for we walk by faith uh, and not by sight. I mean, that's just the way it is, church, uh, and we do it all through life. I mean, we don't see electricity. We see the effect of it. Uh, we just flip the switch and we know it's going to come on. You know why? Because we believe in that thing. We believe it's going to work uh, and all that. Well, I'm going to tell you serving God is the same way the Bible says uh, for we walk not by sight but we walk by faith. We walk by faith. Uh, and the Bible tells us that's exactly how that Noah had the faith to build the ark uh, that was going to save his household uh, and save civilization. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7 the Bible says by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. He was walking by faith. He hadn't seen it rain. He hadn't seen the fountains of the deep broke up. He had never seen an ark. He hadn't seen a ship that was big as a, as a football field and three stories tall. Amen. But by faith, the Bible says Noah being warned of God, he got a word from God of things not seen yet. The Bible says he moved by fear. He prepared an ark to the saving of his house uh, by the which he condemned the world uh, and became heir of righteousness which is by faith. Amen. And then we hear Jesus saying basically the same thing. Uh, I mean Jesus said some stuff and people didn't understand what he was saying and uh, they'd pick up stones to stone him. They'd run him out of town. Uh, amen. They quit following. They accused him of being, a, of being mad which is crazy. They accused him of having a devil. They accused him of being a wine bibber and a gluttonous man. Uh, a friend of publicans 
and sinners and I'm glad to report uh, that we're serving a Savior that is a friend to sinners, amen. Uh, I wanna tell you, lost person, uh, there is a friend to you in Jesus Christ, amen. Thank God forever. But listen what happened one day. Jesus said, he said, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you'll have no part in him. And they didn't understand that. They thought he might have been talking about cannibalism. They understood that the Bible forbids in the book of Le- Leviticus uh, the drinking of blood. Amen. Uh, the, the Bible says, for the life is in the blood. But anyway, amen, Jesus said, yeah, your fathers did eat manna, that's the bread of heaven, and they're dead. He said, but I'm the living bread. I ain't talking about you eating flesh and drinking blood. He said, I'm talking about you being a partaker with me. He said, amen, I'm the living bread that come down from heaven. If any man eats of this bread, he's gonna live forever. And then the Bible says, amen, in verse 63 of John chapter six, where this story is unfolding, he said, it it, it is the spirit, the Holy Spirit of God that quickeneth you. That word quickeneth is an old Elizabethan English word that means means life, amen. Uh, you dig your finger into the quick and that you've got through the dead flesh to the living, amen. Uh, uh, the, the, it is the spirit that giveth life or quickeneth. Uh, the flesh profiteth nothing. And then Jesus said, these words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now I want to talk just a little bit about, uh, amen, about uh, 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 seeing what you don't see. Because I'm gonna tell you something that might shock you. I've never seen Jesus. And I doubt if you have, amen. And if you, you have, so be it. I haven't. I haven't seen him. I just know he's real. Thank God. I've never seen God. I, to my knowledge, I've never seen an angel. I've never seen a cherubim, a seraphim. Amen. You say, well, preacher, you ain't seen nothing. Yeah, I've seen the light. Thank God forever. And that's what's important. Thank God forever. Amen. Praise him. Amen. I've seen the light. Amen. But let me tell you something. The Bible says, and Peter's talking to people, a, a, a believer. And he said in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 89, Whom having not seen, you love. Ain't that amazing that I can love somebody that I haven't seen? Well, I, I'm going to tell you, we do it all the time and we know it's natural. But then when it comes to God, some way or another, we can't figure out that God's the same way. You see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get another grandbaby, amen, uh, sometime in March. Uh, going to be a little girl. And uh, I, I, I haven't seen that little girl. I really haven't, amen. But you know what? Oh, Papa loves that little girl. I love a little girl that I've never seen. Amen. I remember when their firstborn grandchild, Luke, uh, he, uh, uh, when they got the ultrasound, I'm telling you something. Amen. That ultrasound, I could see his left hand just like that, four fingers and a thumb. It's just like he's waving at Papa. Papa liked that so good. You know what he done? When I turned my computer on, amen, you know what popped up there? It wasn't a, a scenery of the, uh, uh, the wonderful foliage that God's given us in Eastern Kentucky. Kentucky, it was that ultrasound and that little hand of that little boy that I didn't know what color eyes he's going to have. I didn't know if he's going to be bald or have a head full of hair. All I know is that I love him. Well, I want to tell you something about this Jesus. Amen. I haven't seen him. I'm with the bunch that Peter wrote to. He said, Amen. Whom having not seen you love and whom though now you see him not yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your soul. Amen. The truth is God considers the faith of believers today as greater than the faith of those who knew Jesus in the beginning uh, and saw Jesus. uh, Amen. And hear Jesus speak personally after his resurrection. Amen. They they seen him through many infallible proofs and, and, and they believed believed in him. But you know what Jesus said? He said, but look at these who never seen him, who never got to talk to him, who never heard what his voice said. In John 20 and verse 29, to doubt in Thomas, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, thou hast seen me, amen, and thou hast believed. He said, blessed are they, that's you and you and you, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Well, you're looking at a preacher. I ain't seen Jesus. I haven't. 
I've sure felt his spirit before. I've, I've experienced his conviction. Amen. I felt his loving touch. Amen. Thank God. But I've not seen him. I, I really haven't. Amen. But Jesus said, you know what? Amen. There's a lot of people that seen me. They seen me prior to the resurrection and after. And they believed in me. He said, but blessed are you. I'm telling you, church, you're, he said, you're blessed if you believe in me, even though you haven't seen me. And there's at least three things that I've learned over the years from the Lord and His Scripture. And, and, and it come to me as plain as day as Tiffany brought the message Wednesday night in Bible study. And as she was teaching, uh, amen, I, 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 I had this thought. I shared it with the church. I'm going to share it with you. And we'll be done here in about 15 minutes. But listen, in, in, in all of our lives, everybody that is here, young, old, or middle age, it's either faith or failure. It's either fear or freedom. Or and it's either fact or fiction. That's what's going on in everybody's life today. And the truth of the matter is God is the one that makes the difference. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, it says, For I say, through the grace of God given unto every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought. Church, listen. Don't get puffed up and proud and like you're a super saint and holier than thou and better than anybody else. You ain't better than nobody. Amen. God's the greatest and to him be the glory. Now I know you're a good person and I'm not trying to say that. But listen, amen. Everybody, God loves everybody. God so loved the world that Jesus died for everybody. And then it says not to think more highly of yourself than you ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So everybody, God's given us faith. Then the Bible tells us in Hebrews 10 and verse 17, so then faith comes cometh by hearing, but you got to hear the right stuff. And hearing by the Word of God. You need to hear what the Word of God says. You'll get faith you, that'll give you faith. Amen. I, I remember as a little boy when the missionaries from the Rehoboth Bible Church on South Fork come to that little hollow that I lived in. And, and Miss Spooner and Miss Peterson, they'd sing that song, God loves all the little children of the world, red and yellow, black and white. They're all precious in His sight. We'd sing that and I was a little old boy that nobody didn't know nothing about amen but I knew that God knew and I, I could feel that God loved me amen even though I'd never seen him I knew that with all my heart and that, hallelujah and, and, and that faith has never left me and I'm bragging on nobody but God amen and, and, and I felt really special and I want to tell you something you may have walked in this church today and you listen your family may not treat you special your co-workers may not value you amen the school you attend you might not be special to them but I've got you some good news. The God of heaven, you are special to him. Everybody is special to God. Amen? Amen. So when the, amen, when the lame man that was healed at the gate, beautiful, that Peter and John, they go into church at the hour of prayer, nine o'clock in the morning, this guy shakes his little tin cup at him, expecting to receive something, and I, I can just sense the disappointment in him. You can read this in Acts chapter three. Uh, he, uh, Peter looked at him, said, silver and gold, have I none? And I can just see it, old lame man, that's just like a preacher, go to church broke, amen. I went to church one night and forgot my billful. I always did like to give in the offering, you know, and you better watch about sitting beside a broke preacher. I looked over at my buddy, went to church with me. I said, you got any money? And I think he had $10. <laughs> he, said, he said, I've got 10. I said, give me five. Amen. I did pay him back, church, but I, I put borrowed money in the offering. Amen. But God's good. Amen. Uh, praise God. But anyway, I, I wasn't broke. I just forgot my wallet. That's bad as being broke, right? Well, let me go on. And uh, they go in there and, and they can't figure it out. This guy's been crippled, never walked. Uh, He's been that way for 40 long years. Listen, I love what the Bible, uh, all the times, you know, uh, the, the woman with the issue of blood was, uh, she was sick 12 years, she got healed. The man in John chapter 5 that was paralyzed uh, was paralyzed 38 years and he got up and walked out of that building. Uh, and now we find this man that was lame uh, for 40 years and he gets 
sealed. What I'm trying to tell you, don't never give up on God. Don't never give up on God. But anyway, after he got healed, the Bible says he leaped up and he ran through the church leaping and jumping and praising God. And the, and the Bible says that the whole church was filled with wonder and amazement and they wanted to know how this happened. They, and listen what Peter said in Acts 3 verse 16. He said in his name, he's telling them how he got healed and his name through faith in his name. He's talking about the name of Jesus hath made this man strong whom you see and you know. He said you know this guy. You know he'd been laying here, amen, day after day for 40 years and couldn't walk. You know who he is. You've seen the condition he's in and look at him now. And yea, he said the faith which is by him. And what it's telling us is our faith, church, God, Jesus is the source of our faith. He said the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of y'all. And then we read in the scriptures of, of, of um, failure because of lack of faith. Amen. Failure because of lack of faith. In John chapter 6 and verse 60, going back to eating my blood and dr drinking my blood and eating my flesh, the Bible says in verse 60, many therefore of Jesus' disciples, when they heard this said, this is a hard saying, who can hear it? I mean, they said, my God, we ain't gonna do that. We, we, the Bible forbids that, amen. And, and, and we, we're not gonna do that, but they didn't understand. They did not understand. Verse 66, the Bible says from that time, uh, 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 many of his disciples, they were disciples, they was following Jesus, they was enrolled under the man, Master, but then when the master said this, uh, it said from that time many of his disciples went back uh, and walked no more with him. And verse 67, then Jesus says unto the twelve, that's the apostolic band, will you also go away? Will you, you're going to do what they did? You're going to walk away from me? And then Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Amen. Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, there ain't nowhere else to go. Well, I want to tell you, church, there's nowhere to go. We even sing it in the hymnals at time. The, in one of the hymnal songs, it says, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go, amen, but to the Lord? I think one verse says, needing a refuge here below, you know, talking about going through stuff. Where could I go but to the Lord? I'm glad that, that we can go to the Lord. I'm glad that he's there for us. And I'm glad that Peter understood that. And he said, the reason we know that, Lord, uh, is because we believe. That's faith. And we're sure. You see, the first bunch that walked away, they failed. They ended up in failure because they didn't believe. Amen. And we see the opposite apostolic man didn't do that because he said we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ the son of the living God and then we find the same thing happening to the children of Israel in the wilderness in Psalm 78 and verse 41 it says yea they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel I mean God couldn't do this he did that but he can't do that I'm going to tell you something church amen whether it's a cancer or a hangnail God can do it amen whether it's parting the Red Sea or walking on the water God can do it amen whether it's multiplying the loaves and the fishes, God can do it. God can do it. There is no limit to what our God can do. And then we have a time in Israel's history and whenever they was in famine, they was famished, people were starving to death. It looked like that nothing could get any worse and it certainly didn't look like that there was a chance that it was going to get in any better. And then the man of God by the name of Elisha showed up in 2 Kings 7, verse 1 and 2. Then Elisha said unto, uh, unto the people, Hear ye the word of the Lord. He said, Right here is what God's saying. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time, just tomorrow, ain't going to take six months, amen. Uh, it ain't going to take six years. It ain't going to take uh, getting the right administration. He said, I know we've been in famine, but something's going to happen. It's going to change tomorrow. I'm telling you something today, church, if you're lost and in trouble and without God, it doesn't have to wait till tomorrow. God can change you today. Hallelujah. Today is the day of salvation. If you hear my voice, harden not his heart. 
He said, here's what God is saying. Tomorrow about this time uh, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Samaria was the capital of Israel once the kingdom was divided. Amen. The two southern kingdoms, Benjamin and Judah, uh, uh, had Jerusalem for the capital and formed the southern kingdom. The other ten made up what we're talking about. Then a lord... The, then the Bible says when Elisha told them what God is saying, then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God. So here's a governmental official that was a, was a counselor or an advisor to the king. I mean, he was helping the king. You've got to watch. Listen, you've got to watch who you listen to. But here is a person that's in high governmental authority, and he said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be. He said, If God opened up the windows of heaven, this couldn't happen. Amen. And he said, and Elisha said, Behold, you'll see it with your eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. He said, he fell because he didn't believe. He said, God just couldn't do that. How many times in our life do we think God can't fix our marriage? God can't give us that job. God can't open that door. God can't fill that church. Amen. It'll never happen. Well, I'm going to tell you, that's a, that's a recipe for failure. I'll tell you what the testimony of the church needs to be. Be, amen, with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Mark 10 and verse 27. So let's go on. The disciples in John chapter 6 they failed because of lack of faith. The Hebrews in the wilderness that we quoted from Psalm 78 fell because they limited God, because of lack of faith. The governmental employee of the king of Israel fell because he didn't believe that God could do what Elisha said he could do. Listen, church, it's either faith or failure. That's a fact. Peter might give us the best example of this in Matthew chapter 14. The Bible tells us in verse 22 through 29, Jesus had just fed this great multitude of people with bread and fish. And the Bible says it straightway. That means immediately Jesus constrained. That means he commanded his disciples to get into a ship and go before them unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. Now, Jesus don't send you out to do something you can't do, church. He doesn't send you out to do something you can't do. Amen. Thank God forever. Uh, I'm almost down to one eyesight. Praise God. <laughs> Ain't God good. But anyway, let me go on and hurry up through this. It says, and when he sent the multitude away, he, he went up into a mountain to, a, a part to pray. Amen. And the Bible says, and when the evening was come, he was there alone. So Jesus sent the multitude away. He sent the disciples to the other side in the ship. He's up there on the mountain praying. And the Bible says, but the ship was now, amen, in trouble. The ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the waves for the wind was contrary and in the fourth watch of the night that's between three o'clock and six o'clock in the morning amen Jesus went unto them walking on the sea walking on the water he could have parted the water he could have stopped the storm but he decided to walk on the water to defy the laws of gravitation and when the disciples saw him walking uh, amen the, uh, on the sea the, the Bible says uh, amen that, that they, 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 they was full of fear they were scared out of their trouble uh, out of their mind they were troubled, uh, amen, saying it is a spirit and, and, and they did all cry out for fear praise God and the Bible says but straightway or immediately Jesus spake unto them saying be of good cheer as I be not afraid and Peter answered him and said Lord if it's really you he said, Lord, if it be thou, if it's really you. I wonder sometimes when you're sitting in church and you get this heaviness in your heart or lump in your throat or a tear in your eye or this thought in your mind that surely there's got to be more to live in than this. I wonder if you would, would, even today, I wonder if you haven't done this in the past, would you just for your sake today, if that happens in this service, just say, Lord, if it's really you. If it's really you, God, give me a word. Tell me something to do. He said, if it be thou, Peter's, one, now listen to this, man, this Peter's a sight. He, he's out there, I'm telling you. Peter said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Now, I'm going to tell you, church, I know old Gary pretty good, you know. I, I live with him every day. 
And, and if that had been me in a storm and I'm thinking my ship's about to sink and, 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 and I see Jesus walking on the water and, 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 and Jesus says, yeah, it's really me, Peter. You know, or that's really me, Gary. You know what I'd have probably said? I'd have said, Lord, if it's really you, stop this storm. Lord, if it's really you, take all this water out of this ship. Amen. Uh, I don't want to sink, praise God. Amen. If it's really you, Jesus, solve this problem that we got here. But he didn't ask any of the above. Amen. Though everything that I just mentioned was needful. You know what he said? He said, he said, you're walking on the water, Jesus, and I'd sure like to do that. I'd like to walk on the water, amen. I'd like to get out of this boat, amen. I'd like to do what you're doing, thank God. That's amazing to me. And you know what Jesus said? He said to Peter, come, get out of that boat, amen. Walk on that water, come over here to me. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, and I can just see old Peter, amen, grabbing the uh, side of that, uh, of that ship and throwing that leg over there, I, I, I guess he tested the water. He may have said, you know, well, he tried to push it down and it wouldn't go. Amen. And he said, well, it's working now. And he threw the other leg over there. And he started just walking on the water. The Bible said going unto Jesus. Uh, hallelujah to God. And, 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 and he walked on the water, amen, to go to Jesus. And then in come fear. And I'm telling you, amen, if you are get under conviction today because of the love of God and his Holy Spirit, I'm going to tell you, that's faith. But they're going something else come and it's going to be fear. Amen. What's some people going to think? What's my friends going to think? Hey, man, I probably can't live it anyway. I've tried church and I couldn't do it. Hey, man, I ain't asking you to try church. I'm asking you to try Jesus. Get out of the boat. Get out of your storm. Walk to Jesus uh, and he'll take care of you. Amen. But anyway, the Bible says, uh, hey, man, but when he saw the wind, he saw the wind. He, he was looking at what he was seeing. When he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried saying, Lord, save me. How many is in church today? Amen. You was in a mess. I'm going to tell you something, church. Ain't nobody that knowed me back then knowed I was in a mess, but I was. Hey man, my heart was empty. Hey man, I was longing and searching for something that I hadn't ever had. Hey man, I was just in a mess. Hey man, how many today's in a mess? Hey man, you, you was sinking in your storm and you cried out. And you know what he done? He saved us. That's what Jesus done. I was 20 years old and I cried out to Jesus on a Friday night. I was sinking in sin. I was in trouble, alienated from God, without God and without hope in this world and I walked in that church empty and I'm going to tell you I left out there full because Jesus saved me and he'll, he'll, he'll do what Chris said he'll do the same for you he said if he saved me he'll do it for you listen God will do it for you amen and let's go on and, and the Bible says he said save me and Peter didn't have faith in himself did you know that he knowed he couldn't save himself but he's going down in this storm Peter said save me he didn't have faith in himself but he certainly had faith in the Lord. He said, save me. <laughs> and you know, the other 11 disciples, they have the boat. <clears throat> but Peter didn't have nothing. He's out of the boat. He's out of safety. He's out of something that can float. Amen. He's out on the water. And the Bible said he's beginning to sink. And he said, Lord, save me. He didn't have the Pope. Did, Peter didn't have anything but Jesus. And the truth is, all, amen, that any of us needs is Jesus. The good news is, amen, that Jesus wants us, amen, even in our time of need. And let me tell you, his fear of the storm and the wind, amen, actually drove him to freedom. And that freedom come through Christ. It come through Christ. In verse 31 it says, and immediately, when he said, save me, immediately, everybody say that with me, immediately. I went to pray, me and my wife years ago went to pray for this elderly lady. And she told us right in her apartment, she said, I don't believe in that overnight salvation. I said, sister, that's the only kind there is. I mean, it happens instantly. You, you don't work your way into it. Amen. You, you, you Listen, everybody in this sanctuary today, you're either lost or saved. Amen. And the thing about it is, you can instantly get changed. Instantly get changed. But she, she said, I don't believe in that. I said, that's the only kind there is. 
It's only kind there is instantly. I believe there's soldiers that before the mortar round come in the foxhole that said, Lord, have mercy, and he did. I believe there's people that wrecked in an automobile and was over the hill dying, and they said, God, save me, and I believe he did. I believe the man on the cross beside of Jesus that said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. I believe he got immediate salvation because the Lord said, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Ain't that something? And the Bible says, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and, and, and caught him and, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when he was come into the ship, they, got, they, got, they could have walked all the way to the shore, but they got in the boat. Ain't that amazing? And when they got into the ship, the wind ceased. And never forget this, in a, especially in times of trouble. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, it says, God's not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Now the last one of these things that I want to look at before we pray is fact or fiction. Fact or fiction. The Bible tells us in John 17, 17, Jesus said, Thy word is truth. Truth is fact. In John 14 and 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's the only way to get to heaven, church. Jesus is not one of many ways to heaven. He is the only way to heaven. He's the only way to forgiveness. Amen. He's the only way to God. Romans 5, by him we have access to the Father. Romans 3 and verse 4, the writer says, Yea, let God be true, and every man a liar. Jesus said in John 8, 31 and 2, He says, Then Jesus said unto the Jews that believed on Him, If you continue, it's not the good starters, but the good finishers that makes it. If you continue in My Word, then are you My disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. He just saying the Word's the truth. And you'll know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Verse 36, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. He'll free you from sins and from habits and from problems. Amen. However, the devil is real good at spreading fiction. He's real good at spreading fiction. Amen. He's real good at what a lot of promoters in the TV and, and media inter, uh, industry is good at. You can edit stuff. Do you know that? Do you know that a lot of these TV programs, not the live stream, that, that scares me about live stream. Man, when it, it's out there, it's out there. You can edit stuff and make it say something that it doesn't say. I'll give you a quick example. Give me five minutes and I'm done. I want to tell you, the Bible, how many knows that Jesus said in John chapter 13 at the, at the Last Supper, he said to Judas, what thou doest, do it quickly. Ain't that the Bible? You flip over three or four chapters and you know what the, what the Bible says? And Judas went out and hanged himself. So you know what? If you listen to those two verses, it's like uh, it's saying that Jesus was telling Judas to hang himself. That ain't rightly dividing the word. He was telling Judas, if you're going to betray me, go on and do it. Go on and do it. And that's what you've got to be careful of, church, because the devil is an expert at spreading fiction. That would have been fiction, what I just said. And the Bible says in John 8 and verse 44, you are of your father the devil, Jesus said, and the lust of your father you'll do. He was a murderer from the beginning, abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. And when he speaketh a lie, speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. That's what the devil is. And I'm closing, and I want Jessica and them to come and get us a song. And I'm, I've got one Bible verse that I'm going to share with you, maybe two at the most, but one for sure. And I want you to think about this. Because Chuck mentioned it in Sunday school, and it's the God's truth that's going to happen. And the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 12, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. Amen. You see, that's what happens to people that believe fiction that they all might be damned. And you see, I was more blessed than some maybe because all my life I've always believed that the Bible was God's Word. I always believed God was God, real, that Jesus came, and that there was an innumerable company of angels round about us. I never doubted any of that. But I want to tell you something. There's coming a time that people will believe a lie. 
that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. You know what that's saying? It's saying there's going to be a multitude that believes the fictitious lie of the devil. Now I want to tell you something and I want to talk real serious with you and we're going to pray and in a few short moments this service will be recorded in the records of heaven and will be history. But the truth of the matter is if you're lost, you're either going to believe the truth or you're going to believe fiction. And the thing about it is the truth is the Bible says, and as it is once appointed upon a man to die, and then after that, the judgment. And the Bible tells us that in Ecclesiastes 3, that was Hebrews 9, 27. It says there's a time to be born and a time to die. There's a set time, and nobody knows when it is. But the thing about what we do know the truth is, today is the day of salvation. If you hear my voice, and see most people think that God's voice is going to be this lightning bolt voice that sounds like many waters, and He's going to grab you by your nap of your shirt and drag you to the altar. That wasn't the way it happened to me. I was driving down the road from church and I heard a still small voice, not here, but right here in my heart. And it said, I'm tired of fooling with you. That's what it said. That meant God was dealing with me and I knew it and he knew it. He said, this is your last chance. And you know, that's going to happen to somebody somewhere today. It's going to be their last altar call, their last chance, their last knock, the last voice of God. And I pray they go with the truth and not with the fiction. But anyway, he said, it's your last chance. You know, what you do, preacher? I turned around and I went back to church. See, I dropped my wife off at church. I was headed out to get meanness. That's the truth. And, and I turned around and I went back to church and I sat in the back pew and uh, I couldn't wait for that altar call to be open. And buddy, I run to that altar because I didn't want to lose my last chance. I hope that you're listening to God. I hope that you know that God loves you, that God will help you. And God wants you no matter what kind of mess you're in because he loves you.